every incident, at any moment, an officer knows will be scrutinized, not just for disciplinary purposes, but possibly for federal or criminal prosecution purposes, for civil liability, and it will be subjected to the crucible of second by second, semi second by semi second analysis by those in the media and those in the public. All of this has produced a terrible situation for our law enforcement officers, not just in their day to day jobs, but for us as a society. We can't recruit people to be police officers right now. Everywhere across the country, there are vacant positions in police departments. And unless things change, that is only going to get worse, and we as a society will be the worse for that. There's no easy solution to what it is we are facing, but I think we know where it has to start. It has to start with honest dialogue. There have to be people who are willing to be willing to shed preconceptions, sit down and talk, share perspectives, have a conversation with each other rather than talking past each other on the nightly news. We also have to come to understand as a society that we are putting police officers, our police officers, in the midst of the most highly armed culture in the history of the world. We are expecting them to make split second decisions about what to do in those circumstances. We're expecting, no, we're demanding that we do it. We have to understand that when they act reasonably in those situations, it's our job to support them, not to excoriate them. But we really have to start, all of us, everyone here, we have to start by changing the national conversation about policing. So I say to Brent Thompson, Patrick Zamoripa, Michael Kroll, Michael Smith, and Lauren Ahearns, I say to them that you and your families and the families of all of the officers injured in Dallas and everywhere else across the country in the last week, our hearts go out to you. You were doing what we wanted you to do, we as a society. And not only do you have our thoughts, not only do you have our prayers, but you have served as role models for all of us. People doing a thankless job, role models that I hope that one day my children are able to emulate. So with that, I thank you.
proves that the dedication, passion, and hard work that law enforcement nationwide is doing is turning the tide. The tide of any police sentiment. The tide of the us against them mentality. And the tide of distrust. We also must join the conversation. A conversation that is tough. A conversation that may be hard to have. A conversation that we all need to be involved in. We all need to be there. We all live in communities in this country. We all serve each other. That's what we need to do right now. To serve in their memory, to serve in their honor. As we gather today with the memorial behind me, we not only honor the fallen comrades, we honor their families, the survivors. They were there for the long shifts, on holidays, weekends, birthdays, anniversaries, and all those other days in between. They were there with a calm voice when you had a tough night or a tough day shift or a tough call or a tough day in court. And they were there for that final shift. For the knock at the door, when reality sets in, that your loved one has made no real sacrifice. Let us not forget the heroic acts of all the Dallas police officers in the face of danger as they protected their city, their citizens, and their fellow officers. Let us not forget our five heroes who gave their lives to protect others. 